Okay, welcome to part one. Let's go ahead and start building this Habitat for Humanity house. Now, based on the guidelines, we're going to be building a three bedroom and we're going to make sure that it is relatively close to 1,070 square feet. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like you to open up Autodesk Revit. And when you open it up, it should look something like my interface. So there's a few ways you can get started. One is to click this button over here that says Architectural Template. And the other is to go to File, New, and then it will open up this option here. And I would like you to go down to the Architectural Template. The other ones are for different types of projects. And since we're going to be focused mainly on the building aspect of the house and not what's outside of the house or the mechanical components within it, we're going to be focused mainly on the architectural template. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to press OK. Give it a few seconds to load up and now you have your workspace. So this is area over here is your workspace. I call these the cameras. And when we're designing our house, we want to make sure that our house is between these four cameras because these dictate our elevation views, which I'll kind of talk about in a little bit. Over here, we have our ribbon with a bunch of different options on it and a bunch of different tabs. We have our properties on this side. And then below it, we have our project browser. Now, depending on who was using your computer last, these might not be here. And if they're not there, they're kind of important in order to making a good sound project. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to get them back. I'd like you to go over to the View tab, click on that, and then head over to the top right section to where it says User Interface. Select that. And then you can see that I have a certain, certain ones of these checked in. So make sure your check marks match my check marks. The most important ones are your properties and your project browser. But if there's anything missing and you want to put a check mark in that box, feel free to at that point. OK, I'm going to click away from that now. It's also important to note that these can kind of detach. So I can like pull it off the bar. And now it's been detached. Uh, but you can also kind of just select it. And with just some finagling, you can reattach it uh, in case you accidentally detach it or if you have a dual screen and you want it to kind of like pull things off to another part of the project. Okay, so let's go ahead and start making this project. Everything always begins with walls and the exterior walls at that. So I'm going to go to the architecture tab, click on that. And then we have an option called wall. I'd like you to select wall. And this is going to allow us to draw a single wall. So just watch, you don't actually have to build this yet. If I clicked and I moved, You'll notice that it allows me to build a wall. And also, as I'm moving this, it's specifying a distance. The first number is the feet, and the second number is the inches. So this would be 64 feet, 44 feet, so on and so forth. Of course, I don't want to just kind of like build the walls. Like I can left click, move down, left click, left, move down, left click, and then reconnect everything. I could do that. But instead of doing that, I'm going to first, let me press escape a few times. So I pressed escape a few times. I selected everything by holding down the left click and then selecting it all. And I'm going to press the delete key if you're wondering how I did that. But instead, I'm going to go to wall. I'm going to go to this shape here, the rectangle tool. So we could just specify a rectangle and just draw it all in at once. And there's some other tools. And you can experiment with these if you're going for very specific wall types. But I'm going to select the rectangle tool. And before I draw that, I'm going to look here to where it says unconnected height. So it's kind of a little cut off right now. But what the unconnected height means is the height of the house or the height of the walls. And these walls are currently set to 20 feet. And if you think about 20 feet walls, that's fairly large for a single story habitat for humanity home. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust that number. We're going to set that to 10 feet. So I'm going to write 10 in there. It's going to automatically update it. And now I'm going to go ahead and just draw in a rectangle. So I want you just to draw in a rectangle and click it in. Mine is 36 by 68, but you can just go ahead, draw in a rectangle, and we're going to adjust the dimensions in just a second. So if you haven't discovered it already, you can zoom in and out of your project by using the scroll wheel on the mouse. So I can zoom in and out, and all, all I'm doing is rolling that scroll wheel like that. 
Okay, I can also kind of translate the project by clicking in and holding in that scroll wheel. So I'm holding it in right now. I'm able to move the project screen around. So zoom in and out and translate. If I want to adjust the dimensions of one of my walls, I just need to select it. And when I select it, the perpendicular wall, those dimensions will show up. So in this case, I selected that wall, but these dimensions show up and I can adjust it accordingly. So that's 36 feet. If I click on this one though, you'll notice that this one over here shows up. So I'm able to select that. I can type in a new number if I wanted to, and then it will automatically adjust it once I click away. So that's just something important to note. Now we had a very specific requirement though for our area. It was 1,070 square feet. And we could do the math. You pull out a calculator and determine how much uh, distance we need for each wall. Or we could just create what is known as an area plan. And an area plan is going to just immediately tell us how much area we currently have. And then we're able to adjust the walls to match the area required for the project. So to create an area plan, I want you to go to the architecture tab and then head over to this area over here, the one that says room and area. I want you to go to area, click on that, and then go down to where it says area plan. I'm gonna select that, and when I do so, it's gonna ask me, hey, which level do you want it for? Right now, I'm currently on level one of my project, and hopefully, you're on level one. You can tell which level you're at, because over here, it's gonna be highlighted, or it's gonna be darkened or bold like that, so that's level one. If by chance you somehow started the project and you're not on level one or you're level two or this does not look like mine, go back, make sure you're on the architectural template and then make sure you're on level one and you could just get there by clicking on it. So if I went to like level two, now I'm on level two. You can see it's darkened. Level one, my walls are back. Okay, but area, area plant, and I'm gonna make sure I'm on level one. This is rentable space, which means it's enclosed. And I'm gonna press okay. It's gonna say automatically create area boundary lines associated with the external walls. Well, since I know all my walls are connected, I can press yes. And it will automatically create what is known as an area plan. It's also gonna be located down here. So it's gonna say area plans rentable. If I click the little arrow or the plus symbol, it will open up and, uh, hey, look, that's my level one area plan. So that's currently the view that I'm looking at. Notice how this one isn't selected anymore. It's not dark. That one is. So this is my area plan. If I want to work on the project, though, I'll jump back up to this one. Okay, so we got the area plan, but we don't know how much area it is. So let's go ahead and get an area number for that. So I'm going to go back to area, and then I'm going to go to this option here that says area click on it, and when I hover in this not enclosed space into this enclosed space, you'll notice right away that the area goes from nothing or unknown to a known area. And right now I'm at 2,238 square feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop that in there by clicking again, left clicking. Then I'm gonna press escape twice, one, two. And I press escape twice because that's a very good way of exiting almost anything Revit can throw at you. So if you're ever holding something with your cursor and you don't want to be holding it, press escape twice, one, two, and you'll probably get out of it. Most of the time, I'd say like 99% of the time it works. Okay, so I'm at 2,238, but I need to be at 1,070. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select one of these walls and just using the keyboard, I'm gonna just start tapping inward. It's like tapping the direction inward. And you'll notice when I'm doing that, my distance is changing, but the area is changing as well. So I can adjust this, and let's see how close we can get to maybe about 45 or so. So 44 looks pretty respectable. I'm going to go ahead and click on this wall next. Okay, this is my 36 wall. I'm going to kind of tap this one in as well. So most houses are rectangular based. 26, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to click on this one and maybe push it back one more feet. So I'm going to go here to the 43, and I'm going to adjust that to 43 like so. Okay, and that is actually something I really like. So I have a 43, whoops, 43 
by 26. And that gives me roughly 1,072 square feet, which is pretty close to the requirements of the project. If you're off by a few feet, that's perfectly fine, but this is the space that I'm gonna have available to me as a three bedroom habitat home. Okay, so go ahead and adjust according to what your needs are, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.